Welcome to Blind Shovel, an arts and music podcast. Today I had the pleasure of interviewing my good friend Nick Norman, Portland, Oregon based ceramicist and draftsman who continues to impress me with his zany and unpredictable work. Hope you enjoy. How's Portland? Nice. Uh, it's kind of windy today. Um, sunny. You love Portland. Uh, I like I like being here right now. It's like a I feel really in my comfort zone being being here because you're from there, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, my parents live here, know a lot of people. Um, and yeah, it's just very comfortable. There's like lots of nature around can go anywhere you want. Pretty easy. Would you ever move back to Philadelphia? No, (laughs) but that not because I don't like it, but because, um, I already, you know, I already lived there for five years. Like I already had my moment there and I feel like going back somewhere, like you're, you're just going to be trying to recapture that, but it's not possible. You mean, unless you go back to where you're from first? No, I mean, just, there's just, <laughs> if, <laughs> you know, if you uh, moved back to uh, Oakland, you would, it wouldn't be the same. No, no. Yeah, I used to have the conception that you should always be like changing levels like a video game. So you should be visiting new different locations every time you upgraded, you know? Yeah, I think. But then I realized you got to return home. Yeah. So but that's distinctly different than those like kind of transplant cities that you go to to have, as you put it, your moment. Although I'm not sure what you mean by that. Well, I don't mean like a moment like, oh, like this is my big moment but just like you have the experience that you have for that time period and then if you go back Mm -hmm. there you're not going to recapture that same time and so it'll all you'll always i don't know it seems like you'll maybe always see it as like that time does that i don't know (laughs) if that makes sense yeah are you having a moment right now uh i don't know yeah i mean i I guess everything is a series of moments Uh, (laughs) that's certainly true that's certainly true that's Um, some some old man wisdom yeah no what are you working Uh, on right now um i am kind of just trying some new stuff out um trying to make some bigger pieces ceramic pieces um i had a couple um people reach out for like some bigger orders this year which is kind of new for me um so that was like interesting to try um but they ended up kind of just being just not coming through in the way not the person but just the work you mean they wanted they wanted a um, batch order of the same thing yeah yeah so it's more like production production yeah Um, that that seems antithetical to how you work it it is but it's also i've kind of started to realize like some of the things that i make are um have like little systems yeah so once you figure out like oh this is like the system to make like this bottle or like to make this candlestick holder um then you if you approach it that way it's more like um like a factory assembly or something right so who's reaching out bed bath and beyond yeah (laughs) yeah they want me to make a little ceramic bed 
<laughs> I made I made these bottles. Well, somebody reached out just on Instagram just to on make Instagram. some bottles uh, for their skincare brand, and I <laughs> made them. Um, however, they all leaked when they got to their destination. Um, and I oh. tried to refire, have them refired, but they had already been like, um, dosed with oils. So like you, they just made it like impossible to like refire it. So I'm going to do a lot more testing, um, this time around and kind of resend the order, um, maybe around Christmas time. So that was a complete failure. People were Basically, complaining. They didn't know they were really nice about it uh, in a way that made me almost feel worse. Cause I kind of wanted them to be yeah. a little angrier, um, but they were like, no, you know, it's like an experiment and this happened. So, um, and they're still, they liked them a lot, um, but just, they just didn't uh, hold the oils. Um, so I'm going to have to do, uh, a lot more testing than I, um, initially set out to do. Yeah. When in, things are going out to other people, you have to have such a refined process. Yeah. And you I just to know what you're doing basically, which right. is, which is tricky, especially with ceramics. Yeah. And then I, and then from there I realized like, wow, maybe I really don't have as good of a handle on this as, I thought, but also, you know, I guess bottles, little bottles are maybe also tricky, uh, trickier than just making like a cup or something. Um, yeah, but, but at the same time, you know, it's like, well, I kind of overestimated what I was able to do. Um, and that's also okay. And I learned something, uh, painfully and then I can try again. They were nice enough to let me try again. So yeah, I mean, that, you probably know your process very specifically, like everyone else who makes things. But then yeah. if you if you don't revere the medium or you're not like a true crafts person, then you probably don't actually know, you know, like, for instance, I don't know wood that well. Mm -hmm. um, there's people who are like obsessive about the intricacies of ceramics who right. don't don't make interesting work typically, but they really know they're almost like they're in love with that thing, not themselves, you know, yeah. whereas yes. we are in love with ourselves and, and what we want to make. <laughs> yeah. You I, know what I mean? would say that. Yeah. I would say that that's, that's probably true. Yeah. I definitely don't have a handle. I've been trying to learn a little bit more about like the chemistry of it. And, a, and another friend of mine just recently showed me like how to mix glazes. Um, so I'm excited to like, kind of start to learn that process too and try to just like understand mm -hmm. the whole thing more. Um, so I can just be better, uh, at it. Yeah. So you said this year was a year of failures. Um, I w well, not, you know, not entirely. I had like, I had a show and, um, the work that I made for that show, I was excited about, but it just seemed like there was just like a period of a few months where I just kind of kept hitting a wall and then like I, I made some other stuff for this other person and then that stuff didn't turn out like how I wanted it to. Um, so it, it, I just kind of hit, um, hit a wall and it kind of, I was kind of down for a little, for like a month or something, but now I'm feeling a lot better, uh, about things. Well, the, um, the vehicle with a man's head in it. Mm -hmm. is a, is a, is a clear, hmm. he, he can go, he's like a textbook image, you know, he's a mm -hmm. big step up. You can, you could build a book around him. Yeah. So yeah, that was a fun, that was a really fun piece to make. And also just the process that was a wood firing, which mm -hmm. I'd never done before. Um, and it was a really cool process to like, learn about like what that, uh, what that entails. And like all the people that were like at the firing were like really nice and open and are totally like clay nerd people, um, that like know a lot. So it was cool to like get a little bit of feedback from people, um, and just kind of learn a new process. Um, and I just signed up for like another firing. In yeah, that January. One, yeah. That one's exceptional. That one is ambitious. 
Yeah. You know, in a way, this is not an insult, but the there's a strength in your work that can often be, it feels off the cuff. I know it's not, but it can feel pretty immediate and casual. Mm. But that guy, he's really something else. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and you recognize that surely, right? I, yeah. I think that was a piece where I, I spent a little bit more time with it. Um, mm -hmm. And I have a tendency to to not like spending a lot of time on a, on a piece or it's not like I don't like it. It just seems like sometimes you can, like you can still make something good without necessarily investing like days and days into it. Um, but I am trying to be better about spending a little bit more time with pieces. Um, and yeah, I think that I, I, helps yeah. imbue them with like some type of magical property or something. Attention Maybe, is that, yeah. is that magical property? Yeah. yeah. People love that. And I used to talk shit on that, you know, like it can cut both ways, but I do think works that show labor within them store that labor and that love mm -hmm. are often the best works. Mm -hmm. You know, we're lazy, so we don't like that idea, but yeah. It's true, you know, like it's a type of sacrifice that the viewer selfishly likes. Oh, wow. He spent mm -hmm. way too much time on that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Could have been, could have been doing anything else. But there he yeah. was. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to go in that direction? I mean, it, it sounds like you want to understand the craft more and be more ambitious. Yeah. I mean, I want to have those ambitious things. But at the same time, I like to make work that is uh, affordable and I, it's not and I don't think that that's possible when you're pouring a ton of time into pieces. Um, and I like the I like being able to, I don't know, to make stuff that is affordable, um, but it's kind of just two different parts of the same um of my uh i don't know how to say it like two things that i'm going for simultaneously like one is like cheaper home goods and then maybe there's like a fine art side to balance it out a little bit you want it to be affordable for what reason um because i want people to be able to buy it well, affordable is, <laughs> affordable is relative in a certain sense. I assume, you, I assume you want people who are your peers to be able to afford it. Sure. Yeah, maybe that's a better way. People that are my peers, I would like to be able to afford it. I sometimes feel weird like when I'm selling something for, I mean, not that I'm selling stuff for that much money, but like $1,000 or something. Like I couldn't personally afford that necessarily, maybe over like maybe a payment plan or something. Um, but it's nice to be able to have something that's like, Oh, here's something that's like 40 bucks. Here's something that's like 80 bucks. And it's just like a little, like a little piece of, um, uh, I don't know, a, a piece of, a smaller piece of work that kind of represents the larger whole. Yeah. I think that's completely fine as long as you have a sustainable career, but yeah. I do find most people don't charge nearly enough for their work. That's yeah, that is which is like also. It, it also stems and I, I could be projecting, but it it can stem from this perspective that people with money are somehow secretly vile or the way right. they obtained it. Yeah. And that's like, well, that's obviously not true, I think. But but I do understand the better argument is the one we just made that it is a good feeling when people you respect within your field can afford your work and vice versa but it's also an incredibly limiting one yeah uh, and creates a weird shame when you try to get out of it yeah i mean I, I think that's exactly how i feel about it when i make something that is more expensive i feel i feel i do feel kind of guilty a little bit because i'm indulging and then i'm i'm asking to be indulged uh 
in a big way <laughs> indulging in what yeah. sense in the more well, in, intricate works you think it's an indulge yeah yeah it's like you're you're taking the time you're like taking the time um to work on something bigger and and then you're you're having to ask for more which then like maybe alienates some of your regular audience maybe so you view so like if you view it as an indulgement it surely is fun for you to make work it can, yeah it can it can be it can you think be it's fun. fun you think it's fun to make comic books no <laughs> <laughs> no i don't think that's that's just pay that's just pure pain <laughs> Yeah, it is. I was just curious. The last comic you made was that big one, right? Oh no, you made that little one for that uh, that anthology. Yeah, yeah, oh, that was a well, while I, back, right? Yeah. Well, I put one out at the beginning of this year. That's like shorter. Um, but I have, I have, I've been typing out a script um, for some stuff. That, so I'm trying to maybe develop something, but it's. Mm-hmm. It, it's not like it's actually begun work on, on anything really. What's um, the name of that comic? I don't know if I've seen that. Um, it was called the wild Isle. Okay. Um, it was something I drew, uh, in like 2020 and it was just kind of sitting around. And then at the beginning of the year, I was like, I'm not going to like actually finish this right now. So I'll just maybe put it into a little book. Oh, this is the one you were animating. You were animating. Yeah. This. Oh, yeah. And I made a little animation for it too. Oh, so that never went full blown. You kind of did like a little promo animation for that. Yeah, and then then the, I'm also writing a script for it now to kind of have it be a little bit more refined. Hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I suppose the pain of ceramics is usually on the latter end when things break or don't even ever get to where they're supposed to get. Yeah. So there's no yeah, avoiding like that. There's no avoiding that. Yeah. Yeah. But also, but, but comics just take like a lot of time, um, in a, and in, in the payoff, I guess, monetarily is just not, no, it, it doesn't, yeah. you have to really want to do the, the thing that you want. That's yeah. There's no incentive Unless you want to feel cool, which is like, it's, it's not even that cool. But that's always what made it a pretty pure scene, at least when I was caring about it, was the people who were there, who were good, surely they were there because they liked making comics, not because they thought they would make money yeah. or any other peripheral reward. And then if yeah. you look at like painting, it's a very different world. Mm-hmm. And... Because you can you can fake your way through those things and make a lot of money. It's very rare, but it's possible. Or you might have a lot of money and you just want to appear sophisticated, and painting will do that for you. But comics won't do any of these things for you. Yeah. So, and nor, nor will ceramics. Uh, you know, I'm sure you have an uphill battle with the way ceramics are priced. I think we've talked about that. You know, most of the time people are making mugs and they're twenty, forty bucks. Yeah. Bar- barely seeing profit mm-hmm. what are you, yeah. eating? are you eating popcorn right now no sorry i was just cutting something you're cutting what are you cutting a piece of plastic i have to I'm, I'm walking back and forth in my in my apartment um kind of i need something to fidget with you need that yeah to talk on the phone it helps me oh really this so, is like sorry. A, this sorry is the- this is difficult. This is a difficult thing. And M. Kettner, <laughs> I mean, I don't think I sent you the podcast I did with her, but she hadn't spoken to anyone on the phone for three years in an extended oh, manner. So, well, I get it. Yeah. Um, so I I applaud you. I I thank you for overcoming that. Oh no, it's fine. I mean, it's 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 what I do whenever I'm on the phone. I'm like walking. I have to walk around to have like a conversation or like, um, do be doing something, um, mm-hmm. is helpful. So have you been teaching in uh, Portland? Um, I've been looking for work, teaching work in Portland, but that hasn't really happened, but I am for whatever reason, still teaching online in Philly. Um, really? 
yeah yeah they're having me on again this year at least for like the first part of the year i think they're slowly phasing that out but they did offer uh me to stay there again so i'm gonna i'm gonna accept that um and oh and i worked the summer camp over the summer too just for like a weekend which was kind of teaching adjacent so why don't you talk about that a little bit the teaching do you like it um yeah yeah i like i like it um there's i mean i have a lot of freedom in the class that i have right right now the one in philadelphia it's at a high school it's like an after school program it's not like an official class per se um but it's like the school itself like doesn't necessarily like have a art program um i think they started having one this year um so it's sort of like a supplementary art education um after school program for the kids that are interested um so we've done like a a comics course and then um this year i'm going to try to focus on like animating because some of the students are interested in pursuing that in college so i want to at least introduce some things to them not that i'm like any expert at all but i think just like having the resources and materials available um is helpful for people to kind of get a sense of what it looked like what that looks like right i mean i don't like are you trying to be an expert or is that is that something you know no no you like, no, you, like the, you like the amateur kind of learning um, mode I, right I mean, I'm more of the mind that like, uh, that, that the, the teaching environment isn't one of like one person, um, espousing like their beliefs at people. And then like, um, they expect them to like take everything in. But I think like having an open class where students can like ask questions, do work or not do work. Um, and kind of be more involved in like what they're interested in is like a better um way that that's the way that i like to do it um and it seems like that is usually pretty good um for what i i don't know did did you say not do work yeah like uh i don't i i first off well the class is like an after school class so it's like Mm -hmm. I'm not, I can't expect them to actually like do stuff or not do stuff, um, Mm -hmm. in this classroom setting, though I do give them homework. Um, and some of them will, will engage with it. Um, but it doesn't, you know, it's not like an actual class. So I can't like expect too much. Yeah. Um, And what was your schooling? Like, I, I forget, I think you did not go to art school. Yeah, it wasn't. Uh, it was, I went to PSU, um, and it wasn't like an art school, but I did take art classes. Um, and I took other classes as well that are just more like regular state school schooling. So it was kind of like a, more of like a general, like liberal arts degree. And I'm like, I focused in painting, but it wasn't like a BFA Mm -hmm. program that I attended. Um, yeah, but I, so I still think I got some elements of like an arts education, but it definitely wasn't as rigorous um, as like an art school. And were you drawing from a young age? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was, I was uh, drawing as a child. Um, you yeah. went through life thinking you were an artist. I think I think so. And that was it was encouraged and then also like not encouraged at the same time uh, I, th- I think i know what you mean you know what i mean it's like oh that's great that you're doing that but you're not gonna like actually do that like <laughs> yeah and i, I really. in, in defense of those people usually one's parents it's like uh, there is a distinction between a career uh and a hobby yeah and that's probably what they were probably encouraging us to do it as a hobby yeah and then we uh misunderstood that and made a career that's yeah that's the, and yeah and they did it because they want what's best 
for us and pursuing art maybe isn't always like what's best for somebody potentially no, no, i don't know it's often not i mean how many yeah. people there's so many people that i would not recommend become artists in fact most of them yeah i wouldn't yes. i would say they should have a creative output you know some kind of uh, potentially for therapeutic reasons although i uh but i certainly wouldn't I, I almost think it's like a dangerous thing to encourage someone to do, especially if you think they have no talent. I would also agree. And it's hard. And I like, don't want to agree with you, but I, I do. Oh, that's um, I mean. And just, and <laughs> I just <don't>... see, <laughs> just seeing like what, like I've seen like friends like go through with just like going to school and accruing a lot of debt and then, ending yeah. up like not really pursuing it. And like, same with like the students that I'm teaching. Um, I'm trying, like, I totally want them to pursue what they want. Um, but at the same time, I'm like, you know, there's like other practical things that you can pursue um, that can give you um, other skills that will help you make money and you can also do art. So it's, um, I feel like I'm becoming like, my parents or something in thinking like it's pretty well, normal like in that way. It's yeah. Pretty normal. And there's, it's, there's a, it's humiliating or it, at least it creates humility in the sense mm -hmm. that your thoughts should change. You should be informed. And there is a pattern to the way human knowledge is accrued. I don't think there's any shame in it. Um, but there is nothing worse than a bad artist. I would say societally, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. It's just a selfish mode, and if you're not even outputting good work, then you're just a, you're almost the worst of the worst. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I'd rather uh, I'd rather you uh, do something very simple and and uh, of service to others. Oh god! I feel like you're just you're speaking to me directly. <laughs> no, we'll we'll step away from this. So there's obviously a lot of uh, food in your work. And we mm -hmm. all know that you're a very good cook, although you mm -hmm. won't release the cookbook. Mm -hmm. And do you think that's if I, for some reason, and cast a spell that disallowed you from being an artist, would you become a cook? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know uh, that spell, by the way. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I've definitely thought about like what I would pursue outside of art if I were to. I mean, I, there's still time, I guess I could there's parts of me that are like, I could like still do, like I could still learn something and like go pursue it uh, now and still have a completely yeah good time. Um, but I think, yeah, maybe, maybe a cook, although that life is even harder oh, yeah. and worse and, um, and nobody respects you in a way, unless you're like the highest level of cook. Um, well if you feed them and they like it they respect you pretty quick that's what i yeah think is, it's cool about being good at cooking it yeah but it's like but it but for a restaurant i feel like you're like an anonymous figure in the back oh um, yeah and you don't you know and like the servers are like the face of the restaurant and the cooks and the and the people that are actually making the, the food happen are uh yeah I think you'd have a wonderful restaurant. You could design all the plates and the utensils. I mean, and yeah, you're good at branding. We we you know we've seen you do some branding. Yeah, it's always a nice time. And then you're very good at cooking as well. I'm I'm okay. Uh, Chelsea, uh, my girlfriend is is better at cooking, but I I do end up cooking quite a bit. Oh yes, and you had a kind of a challenge. It was on YouTube. Oh, during, um, during like the pandemic or I believe, I think it was yeah kind of cook off trail. Yeah. We did like a little, uh, chopped challenge with some, with some different people. Um, you guys won every time. And no, 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 it was, it was, it was well, cause no one was in the same room. So people just had to be like really honest about their <laughs> dishes and then, and then people that were watching would say, would like vote on like who, who won the round based on like presentation and all that. Um, it's a good it idea. wasn't, yeah, it was fun. It was like a really fun thing to do. Um, but it definitely had like a lot of, 
limitations. And it's not like there was like thousands of people watching. There were maybe like 20 or something, yeah, which is not, still, which is still nice. Yeah. Are you I'm, frustrated? Oh, well. Watching and commenting the whole time. That's beautiful. Yeah. Are you, are you frustrated by the, uh, the need you have for exploring all these different avenues? Um, or do you accept it? Do you sometimes, like it? Sometimes I, I like, uh, yeah, there's definitely like, I have a lot of dis, uh, disparate things going on all at once. Um, but the cooking thing is pretty practical cause it's mainly just like, well, I want to eat something good and I want to like save money. So if I know how to like do stuff at home, Oh yeah. You know, I don't think it's so disparate. I mean, I'm like begrudgingly a generalist, you know, I specialization can be good when someone likes doing that thing. Mm. And I admire those who specialize, but there is some hunger in me. And I don't know if it's like an attention deficit. I guess that's the part where the shame might come in where it's like, uh, do I have the attention to work on comics for 50 years and just be that mm -hmm. it doesn't seem that way, but, or is it a lack of love? Right. Um, mm -hmm. Or is it just uh, a need to express? It's kind of an infidelity. It feels like an infidelity sometimes. And, uh, but I think we're built the same in that, in that way. I don't think it's disparate in the sense that they don't make, it doesn't connect, but maybe to us internally it seems disparate i think people look at it like oh this makes sense this is one person mm -hmm. with one identity yeah yeah i mean do you but i'm maybe you have the same issue but like if you almost feel like any time i start looking at like something that vaguely interests me i start getting kind of obsessive and like figuring out a way to kind of work it into the to my, to my practice or my life or something. Yeah. You, it's no different than love in a sense. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why it might be a form of immaturity. You know, those kind of people who they need to date someone new every three months because it feels yeah. good. Yeah. And I, I think if you don't watch out, it can become that, but obviously you're, you're starting to specialize more and more in ceramics. You know, you might have these, yeah. always have these little branches of the tree, but your trunk is looking pretty much like it's made out of, clay mm -hmm. yeah i think i think it has become that and that and it's i don't want to say it's like begrudgingly become that but like <laughs> in a way you know it's like you you start focusing in on one thing and other things just kind of like fall to the side a little bit and you're like and they're kind of passing you by uh as you are um you know focused in and it's kind of it can be kind of challenging sometimes um to to just kind of let things go but i think it's ultimately probably a good a good thing yeah i think um, it's called maturity it sounds like yeah. maturity or it's like you <laughs> you kind of like actually you know dedicate yourself and and you accept the sacrifice of all the things you can't do yeah i think that's yeah. natural at all because we're are we the same age about no. uh, just about maybe a year or something be 32 i'm 31 i'm wow. gonna be 32 though so young yeah <laughs> you're 33 you're... yeah okay. it's just barely holding on <laughs> but what do you got what are you like excited for what are you looking towards you got uh, any shows coming up no shows coming up um yeah, nothing really, nothing really planned um, currently. Uh, just kind of experimenting and making some some new work, doing some wood firings coming up in um, in January um, mm -hmm. and possibly October. Um, but yeah, ma yeah, mainly just kind of focusing in and doing ceramic stuff. Um, and longingly thinking about a comics that I'll never make, I think is the other. Yeah, that can happen. Thing. Yeah, that can. It's weird. If you indulge too much in the in the world before you make it, you almost get the hit, mm. the dopamine hit 
yeah. of it too much. And yeah. then you're like, well, I already just thought about it, kind of lived yeah. it. Why yeah. would I waste the uh, three years trying to get that out to other people? Yeah. Uh, so that's why I prefer the process to inform the story. So I don't know. Mm. I haven't gotten through it until I made it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, that makes sense. That's a, that's a good approach. But it looks like you're not trying, you're showing it. I don't know how to describe it. I don't know these galleries because I don't know much about Portland, but are these, it seems like a Portland gallery is different than a New York gallery. Mm. Like these, Um, these are like shops quasi shops almost yeah like a lot of the spaces i mean the space that i show at called lowell um is like a a a shop um is mainly a shop um and then it has yeah it has a gallery space as well um Mm -hmm. but yeah a lot of spaces like that are like that here which i think is out of just like a practical it's like practical and also it's like I think, I mean, I really like that approach of like going to a gallery that also simultaneously has other fun stuff in it. Like, it's just, it's a cool way to approach, um, like looking at art and there's like art that is affordable and like weird thrifted things. And then there's like some like contemporary painters being shown next to it. And so it's, Right. This resonates with your ideal. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe, yeah. Maybe, I mean, uh, that's exactly my ideal is uh-huh. um, work that's affordable and work that's uh, more fine art um, directed. So maybe you're more Portland than I ever realized. Uh, maybe. 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 Yeah, maybe so. Although, I mean, I feel like, I mean, Harpy was kind of like that. But maybe I'm more Portland than you realize. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. What do you what do you got cooking? I mean, it's really the art center is pretty time consuming. Yeah. But we got to get you back out here to finish. Those shelves and those things we were working on. Yeah. To tell the people listening, we were we were doing a fabrication residency. And we are in the middle of building a rocking chair. Yes. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll get that done soon. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the pillows, how are the pillows looking? Those are done. Those are done, done. Okay. Yeah. So it just needs to be attached. And then, and then the, if you want to attach the, pieces. Yeah. 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 Okay. The finishing touches. Yeah. But we'll get yeah. there. Okay. We'll get, I don't, I don't want to go into my life too much. Okay, that's it's yeah. not about me. It's more of the service of like people understanding your process or thinking a bit more, being introduced to the work. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I was talking to Ketner, who I think you have some kinship with and respect to. I don't know. I wouldn't yeah, call the word. I just met. I just met. Um, met Ketner. I met Ketner and her beautiful husband. Oh, he's they beautiful. Came through, and they came through town um, and just said hi for like maybe a half an hour, an hour, and it was really nice. Not not who I was expect. like, I don't know. She's not who I expected her to be. Uh, really? How, I, I mean, we don't we don't need to go into that. But okay. That's interesting. I always but thought in it was good, funny. But in, a, in a, good, a good way. She was, yeah, it was great. He thought she was just some stuck up bitch making tiny. Oh, no, Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> No, I do think it's funny, especially from my days of, of, well, you know, caring about Tumblr. I always thought you could know pretty quickly who you'd be friends with based on their work. Mm-hmm. And it was, and it's, I've rarely been disproven. Yeah. <laughs> like you, you kind of know, it's pretty weird when a person doesn't look like their work in some sense. Mm. Who are you thinking about right now? For what? You know anybody that? like that? Where you're like, how could That's that person look- make this work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like it's very rare. Um, I don't. I, I'll need. I need more time on that. That's because most people look like their work. I guess. I guess so. But yeah. people can be really. You know what I will say? 
is like they might be boring, but their work might be really interesting. Mm. I feel like that can be true. Like they put it all into the work and mm. then they, maybe socially they're just kind of, it's maybe uncomfortable yeah. and they're just saving it all up in there. Yeah. Hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I feel like that sometimes. Uh, you feel that way? Kind of. Yeah. It's although it's hard to, it's hard to say. Uh, sometimes I feel very sociable, but then sometimes I'm like, I don't know. Uh, feel very boring. I think like, I feel like right normal. now, like I feel like right now, I'm just not right now. Not, not very interesting to maybe talk to. I don't know. I can't tell. Well, tell me something. I'm interesting. Scared, I'm scared to look, to listen back to this. And no, you will never listen back to it. It's fine. <laughs> Tell me something interesting. Tell me a factoid or a joke. Oh, wow. Uh, well, I recently we found go. out Uh-oh. that why there are not as many mummies Uh-oh. in in the world is because they, uh, they were eaten. What? There is a whole black market of buying and selling mummies um, in Europe, and they were... Uh, a lot of them were ingested because it was believed that they contained something called bitumen, um, which is basically asphalt. But but back in like the 1600s, people thought bitumen was really good for you. So it was sort of like a health craze. Um, so so these humans were eating these yeah, mummies. Yeah, they were like powdering them up uh, in like a pestle. And then you could go to the pharmacy and buy it um, and you like apply it to wounds or like ingest it. It's a very Nick Norman factoid. I was, I was so excited when I found that out. <laughs> it's just so, it's just like so perfect, uh, like perfectly encapsulates like how people are. Right. Someone's thinking they're doing this incredibly reverent divine preservation then time passes and the other people are just eating them and grinding yeah. them up. <laughs> but your, your work often has this violent, acceptable violence mm-hmm. to it. You know, you're clearly not a violent person unless mm. you've changed. You may have changed mm. when you moved to Portland, you know, but right. uh, there is this gruesome quality to the work. Mm. You know that. I mean, they, there's a pumpkin carving a human body. Well, yeah, yeah. There are there are things where I do indulge in kind of violent fantasy. Um, but then, but then, like my ceramic works feels pretty tame for the mo- for the most part. Currently, currently, it's all it seems very like interior design. Yeah. Well, maybe focused. maybe you're thinking more about those opportunities that are coming your way. Yeah. But it's easier to draw things of that nature. Yes. I feel. Yeah. You, you, it's less of an investment and things just spill out. Mm. And then people judge you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> do, you feel, do you feel judged? Do you ever make things that make you feel judged? Um, per, like my, I feel like, and this is probably true for everybody, but you judge what you make way harsher than anyone else ever judges it. If you're Um, good. Yeah. If you're bad, the opposite is true. (laughs) Yeah. And we've all seen that. We've seen that. Just overconfidence of something. Can be overconfidence or a kind of ideological thing where like maybe you're a hippie on a beach and you paint like tie dye swirls and that you've done it for decades, but somehow you've not gotten better or worse, Mm. but you, but you just like dig it and you just kind of, It's a weird thing because you have to be very critical to be good. And, but you have to also not be so critical. You don't make anything. So in this sense, most artists who are good are quite balanced psychologically when it comes to at least that process, that kind of piston of judgment and enjoyment. Mm. I don't know. You can't even teach that. I actually think it's the most important thing. 
Yeah. Because the people who came in art school from art uh, magnet high schools who thought they were mm. really good, yeah, they de- quickly within one week were thought of as good, and then they became very nervous about making bad things. I see. And, and nothing, like maintaining nothing. their their yeah. perception. And, yeah. I think like it's it's very beneficial to be kind of of a middling talent level, but with a high drive, mm-hmm. uh, which is how I feel. I look around at people who can really draw and I've been around them and I'm like, wow, this person is far more exceptional at, at drawing than me. Yeah. But they, they might not have the same drive. Sure. I mean, that makes I feel like that, that makes might a lot make of sense. And there's more room to grow and, and growth is, is really exciting when you, when you feel it in your work. Um, right. To see, and that, and I, that gives, I mean, that gives me even more drive. Like when I see just when that happens, it feels really good. Yeah. Yeah. And I think once you acknowledge growth can happen, you now have a, a vertical metric. And so, Again, if people don't have that, if if they think art is purely relative and everything is the same and you can make anything and it's good, they just have like a horizontal plane of nothingness. Mm-hmm. But once you have discovered growth, well, you're you're blessed and you're cursed because usually you don't want to stop growing. And it will haunt you if you I mean, you're growing, that's clear, you know. I try to remind people and myself when they level up. And again, that guy in the car is, is the level up. And that happens every like two years, three years, if you're lucky. Mm. Otherwise, you're just kind of riding plateaus but that are necessary. And then you you bump up again. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It can be slow and frustrating, uh, too, when you're not. When you're not growing, it's not a good it's not always a good feeling it's usually not but like you said this year is full of failures and but technical failures you know yeah those things push you artistically often (laughs) and that's why it's good to be exploring different projects and working for clients because they often put you in positions of discomfort you wouldn't go to naturally (laughs) you wouldn't have to figure out all these technical things if you were just making fine art that yeah, that's very true. And I don't, and it's not like teaching will put you there either, you know? Right. Yeah. Teaching is, is pretty, I do really like it. Um, but there's parts of it that are very limiting and it can be hard when you try to explain something or show something to a student or tell them ways that they can improve. And I mean, they're, they're kids. I mean, they're children too. Um, Mm -hmm. so they don't always listen or like, don't always take your feedback seriously, which is, which is okay. Um, Mm -hmm. but yeah, that's like something in teaching where I just wish, uh, I was just like, I want you to listen like a little (laughs) bit more. Well, it's hard when you, you sound very open as a teacher. So it's yeah. like they're kind of going to do what they do. The kids who are into it will pay attention. The rest will just drift off to nothingness, you know? Yeah, which is true. I mean, that's just kind of how schooling works in general anyway. I mean, the kids that are wanting to, like, learn a specific subject will pay attention, and they might not pay attention in other subjects. And then, and that's just, I mean, that just seems like how it goes. People are just more inclined to learn thing, m- m- certain things than other things. Yes. And they can't be forced. Their hand can't be forced to, to do something they don't want to do. So certain personalities. Yeah. Yeah. I think some people just gr- grind through that, but yeah. art artists typically, no, it's yeah. typically not their thing, but then later on they learn they need that muscle. Mm hmm. I think, again, that's one huge thing. Like the willingness to have what's in your head not be what's out there. Mm -hmm. You know, that imperfect translation. 
And in a lot of ways, that's all they're chasing. Is just a better translation of what's in their head. Yeah. Which yeah. isn't always. It's good. never. It's never good. Or well, it's not <laughs> never good, but it's never that thing. Obviously, yeah. you know. Yeah. But what ambitions beyond this? There's any huge ideas besides the comics that that you're sitting on? Um, I, not like not explicitly. I mean, I have like narratives kind of running in my head that I would like to explore more into and just and try to get get them out because the, it's just been sitting with me for a long time. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just kind of want to just get better at ceramics and sort of hone in on um, kind of s- having having more systems to work with in ceramics, like figuring out, um, yeah, just figuring out like different ways of combining certain forms that I that I work with, um, like these like there's like different shapes and stuff that I've been working with. So I want to kind of just expand those um, and just play around, play around more. Um, yeah. No, you want to, no, you wanna, your goal is to expand shapes. That's, hmm. that's what I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, yeah. What that's about great. professionally? Are you trying to go down this uh, bed, bath and beyond path? Mm. It would be cool to like get some more people, some more design people interested in, in my work. And I've had a couple people reach out, but I'm also like skeptical a little bit of designers. Mm. Um, What's that mean? In some ways. Well, just because I feel like I know that I'm like, they'll people will pay for, for what they want. But sometimes I just like, I feel like I'm just being used or something, but which I guess I am because I'm just, making what they want, what they wanted me to make. Um, well, you should feel like you're, you're m- mutually. We're mutually in, gaining engaged in a relationship. Yeah. Um, artists get so used to just doing whatever the fuck they want that yeah. then suddenly when they're working with other people, they think they're being used. Yeah. But like other humans are like, Oh yeah, that's called going to work or doing right. anything. <laughs> yeah. So maybe that's something I need to, uh, I need to get over. Uh, I think, I mean, I, for me, at least, I think that was a path to maturity. It's like, Oh, well, most people, yeah, they, you know, uh, it's not necessarily being told what to do, but it is cooperating. Right. Yeah. And that word says it all. I mean, it's, it's two people or more operating together. Um, but you have a very singular vision, you know, mm-hmm. Well, and, and it's singular in the sense of that it's it's willing to be humorous. And and strangely enough, at least in modernity, the h- humor within art never fetches a high price point. Mm-hmm. Yet, supposedly, we value right tremendously yeah. so, you know? So very, yeah. very strange. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's like I once said to you, the thing that's most unique about your work is never, no one would ever pretend to be that, you know, no one would ever have the pretense of making this kind of work. Mm. That's a compliment. Like, like no one would be so insane as to pursue this, like what, <laughs> whatever no, or something. They wouldn't sit down and calculate like, uh, I'm going to make drawings with ve- mostly vegetables and animals and various arrangements with this particular tone, like, and, and then pursue a career from that. It, it seems very, very organic and authentic mm. as an expression. There's no put on to the work. Mm-mm. And that's, yeah. I think it's good. You didn't go to art school because that can get erased pretty quickly in art school. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and I, I feel like I had to do some, some good amount of unlearning some things too, uh, that, that you learn at school. Um, like, I feel like the work that I made while I was in school and I mean, everyone's work kind of sucks when they're in school. Um, but I was maybe a little bit more focused on like, what is like the meaning of 
this in in the scheme of like art history or contemporary art or something or thinking that that was like important um yeah they active they activate your head at the sacrifice of everything else your heart soul etc and uh it's it's outright boring Mm -hmm. it creates boring work and boring people and a boring Mm -hmm. system that's kind of insular yeah yeah i mean i i don't dis i don't disagree um with that um but then they do you know but then there are people that like are championed in contemporary art that are also like really exciting and stuff so it's like uh, i i don't yeah i don't know that there's always it's always boring but but at least like uh maybe at the school level or something. i mean in the schooling yeah i mean yeah because the to speak of the art world the fine art world is it's so nebulous that mm-hmm. of course there's interesting people who make fine art and who exist yeah. within it but the i would say the general structure first of all artists don't they aren't born from institutions i don't think mm-hmm. i don't even know what art education is in a sense yeah i i think when I went to school, it was clear who was an artist and who wasn't from day one. Mm-hmm. And it was just, just felt like a thing that was, you know? Yeah. And like, if I had a kid, I don't, I'm not, I think naturally they'd be interested in what's around, but I don't have any intention of making them an artist. Yeah. But you, you know, a secret, you hope a little bit. I don't know. That's tricky, yeah. right? Like, let, let's say you and I fancy ourselves good artists, right? I, I think it'd be weird to have a kid who was like, like you, you knew they were bad, mm. but they loved it. They loved yeah. it even more than ourselves. Yeah. And, and it, it would break their heart for you to be like, yeah, you, maybe you shouldn't go down this path. Like it's, it's one thing when our parents say it, who aren't artists, but right. <laughs> it would be, it would be, you know, I'm from a large family and no one does the same thing. And yeah. I, I'm grateful for that, you know, because I, I don't, I don't know what that looks like. You know, obviously there's families full of artists, but you, you're the same thing, right? No one in your family is an artist. Mm, yeah. I'm not, I mean, I think like my, like some great aunts and stuff, you know, did casual like watercolors yeah uh when they were when they were younger um but no one's like pursued it really as like a career path or or anything i mean what's a great in if they haven't pursued watercoloring right early on <laughs> <laughs> it's just an ant yeah <laughs> well it was good talking to you yeah you too Thank you for bending your ear towards the blind shovel. Music by Dory Bavarsky and Mingja Chen. Next week we have Jesse Balmer.